Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is video number seven in our series on contributing to Ruby on Rails. So it has been about five months since the, the last time we had an update on this video series. And if we go and look at our GitHub notifications, we had uh, some mentions a couple 23 hours ago or so if we look here the uh, so in our in our absence the the rails bot had uh, commented that the pull request hadn't been or the issue hadn't been commented on for a while and had been marked stale I commented that it had still it was still a an issue on 6.1 in main and still fixable by the pull request and it got marked as stale again yesterday and our actually I'll open it in another window here so our pull request here had been marked as stale as well back in April of 2021 and then um, I forgot to uh, to comment on it to keep it unstale so uh, the rails bot closed it but when the um, uh, the stale notification came in on the uh, on the issue Alex here um, added the the tag, asked if I could fix the merge conflict, which would have been in the uh, the change log, but Raphael uh, went and took care of that for me. So the pull request was successfully merged and closed, and the branch can be safely deleted. So that is the. Um, story there if we go to I don't know how soon after my pull request gets merged here so if we go to contribute uh, that takes us right back to the repo Team. So this is the core team. All other contributors. It's tracked on the Rails contributors site. And if we look at I believe there's a searchable ability to do this. So I don't think the timestamp on my commit got updated. So let's find out December 3rd. like it would have been December 9th is when this would have been time stamped. So before I had one Commit now I have two, so it would have been December tenth. Um, UTC, but that's our merged pull request, so we can see that here. So uh, lessons here: if you're doing this on your own, don't keep watching GitHub. Don't let it get stale. So if something gets stale, just add a comment saying 
still relevant, assuming that it is, actually check and uh, ensure that it's still relevant if it is. Uh, if I had been online and available during the time when the, uh, the request was made to fix the merge conflict, what I would have done is I would have um, pulled down the uh, fetch the rails main repo and rebased against it there would have been a merge conflict in the change log and then I would have um, solved that by putting mine at the um, I think it's at the top that the it's in reverse chronological order so yeah you put yours at the top and then I would have um, updated the, the timestamp so if I'm if I were here and uh, after I had fix my merge conflict so it would have been git fetch rails main and then it would have been ebase rails main might have actually done an interactive rebase there so done that and then after I um, resolved the merge conflict I would have done git commit amend sign it no edit date equals and now and that would have updated the timestamp to yesterday instead of keeping it in um, December of 2020 instead of June of 2021. So that will, at least for this contribution to Rails, that will kind of close this one up. So we contributed to the to the guide on testing to make sure that our um, our change to the generator was reflected in the docs. We went in, make the change to the template, and that was really all that was needed in this. And this was done over the course of the other videos in this series. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, Keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.